Yo, what is up, everybody? Jumping yeah, and I'm back on some Neo 2. And today, I actually want to give an update to my overpowered axe build. If you don't know, the axe is actually my main weapon, and I've been playing with it ever since I made my original video, and I have been updating it. Now, more recently, I have done some pretty dramatic changes, so I actually wanted to make a video to kind of show it off because I'll be honest with you. It's really strong. Now this build is really simple, just like the original, but I will at some point show the original setup as well because I have changed the armor and the set bonus, but the concept is the same. That's the most important part, and I will show that original setup because that's really easy to make. So if you guys want to play around with this concept, you might want to try the original setup because it could be very easy to set it up for yourself. Where this one might be a little bit more complicated because I am using inheritables to boost damage and sometimes you might not be able to get those inheritables. But I have been given out inheritables. If you want to know what my PSN is, just check the description and you can find it. So that is an option. If you want to hit me up, I'm normally willing to hook people up with inheritables that I have especially that I'm showing in videos like this one. So, let's go ahead and get started with this. Now, this is Calamity's Pulse, so this is the ultimate show me how strong you are mission now, and we are just going to wreck all the bosses. At the end, I will run through a mission where there's some enemies, so you can see that as well, but I do tend to go into great details about my builds, so because of that, I always put timestamps, so if you want to skip around, just use the timestamps. You can find it in the description, and you can find it in my pinned comment. So, if you want to skip around, that's completely fine. Alrighty, well, let's go ahead and do this. I am actually going to use a Spirit Stone as well, that way I can get the Tension buff right away, because I hate the snake, I hate the snake so much man he moves around it's very very annoying and also you can't poison him so you can't get that extra damage on him with the poison there's a lot of annoying things about the snake but heaven and earth can absolutely wreck him if you can actually hit him but he likes to move well i smashed him there so there you go now if i can get lucky with this guy I can actually take him out with one heaven and earth just because I have to hit him in the back, but that's not too difficult. But unfortunately, I'm kind of bad at this game. So let's see. He's going to jump at me. I have a perfect opportunity. Smack him! Okay. Well, I didn't kill him, but came pretty close. Let's go ahead and buff up. Now, the final guy... It's really easy for me to miss my weakness talisman or my sloth talisman because I gotta let him spawn. And there we go. Hit him with that. Nice. Let's let him start to attack. And now we're gonna smash him. One heaven and earth. No problem. Let's actually show off the damage of this. Alright, come on. There you go. How you like that? 45,000. I've seen it hit for 50,000. And if I can get the confusion effect on him, which I don't with this build, but I can if I want to, I can hit him for even more. But I don't even know how much I could potentially hit him for. It would be a lot, though, because, yeah, Rumbling Earth is very strong. The main thing about it, though, that's really good, because I know some people might say, well, Lumber Chop might be better. I'm not a big fan of Lumber Chop because, unfortunately, it just doesn't have the range. Rumbling Earth has massive AoE, and it's just so easy to hit enemies and bosses with that. And you do get hyper armor when you're charging it up. That's really nice. I love Rumbling Earth. Alrighty, well now I'm going to go back to the main menu, and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this build and how you can set it up. Alrighty, now the first thing I want to talk about is the skills, but mainly I want to talk about the strategy and what we're doing with this build. We are taking advantage of the Grandmaster perk intensity. What this does is that it will massively boost the damage of your attacks that will reduce your key to zero or below. So what we're doing is we're doing attacks that are going to reduce our key all the way down to zero, and those attacks are going to hit really, really hard. 
Now the attacks I'm mainly using is heavy nerf. This will pretty much always reduce my key to zero when I go for it. And I'm also using rumbling nerf. Now rumbling nerf is a little bit interesting. I'm going to talk about something when I get to the skill customization. Because there is something you have to do if you are in the B agility range. Which is under that 70% threshold. If you're over 70% which the axe is the only weapon that honestly benefits from being over 70%. Most of the time, if you see someone, if they're over 70% and they're in that C agility range, that means they're probably newer to the game, they don't know what they're doing, and they're just equipping heavier armor for more defense, and they don't really understand like why that's a bad thing. Because whenever you actually are over 70%, you're going to receive a penalty for how much key it's going to cost you to do attacks. Now normally that's really horrible. Nobody wants that for most builds, most weapons. But with the axe, with this strategy, that is something we can take advantage of because we're trying to actually use up all our key and we are getting a damage boost by doing that. So with my other build, for example, that's a build where I'm actually on purpose trying to be overweight. I'm trying to be a thick boy and I'm over 70%. I have C agility on purpose. That way I can actually take advantage of intensity. And one thing you can do is you can actually do strong attacks and doing strong attacks. I can reduce my key to zero with just one strong attack. I can reduce my key to zero, no problem with rumbling earth. And I can definitely reduce it with heaven earth. But I could even reduce it with things like Lumber Chop if I wanted to, or even Tri Spark if I wanted to. So I could theoretically take advantage of a lot of different skills, and that's actually really cool. So that's something that you can do, is actually make yourself overweight on purpose. Now for this build, we're not doing that. We are in the B Agility, mainly because this is more of a build focused on Heaven and Earth. And the strategy that we're mainly doing is that we're doing Heaven and Earth to start, and then this is going to reduce our key to zero. Then we will key pulse to get that damage buff. Then we will do a strong attack. Or we might actually do another heaven and earth. Or we could even do a rumbling earth. Same with rumbling earth. We can start with this. Then key pulse. Go into heaven and earth. Or do a strong attack. And each time we attack. If we're doing that strategy. We are reducing our key to zero. Pretty much every single time. Now one really important aspect of this is Rage. We do need to use Rage. That way it's going to not only give us the massive attack boost, but it also increases the amount of key that we use when we attack. So this is actually like a double benefit because Rage is so good that most builds now are using an axe as a secondary, busting it out, using Rage, and then switching to their other main weapon so they can actually take advantage of this massive damage boost. But with the axe, we're taking advantage of it, and not only is the attack power good, but the increase to the amount of key that we use is super good for our build. Another thing that you actually have to pay attention to if you're going to try to make this build is how much overall key you're going to have. So one thing that you do not want to do is you do not want to boost your key with like the passive that will just give you more maximum key. Same with your titles. So if you're going to make this build, you might need to use a Zen manual to reset all your titles. And that way you're not going to go for any of that bonus key that you can get from your titles. It's something that I always do when I'm switching back to my axe build because a lot of times I'll play with like a spear or dual swords, whatever it might be. Then I'm like, I want to play with the axe for a while. And I always have to use a Zen manual because I want to get rid of all that bonus key. Because every other build, I want that key. But for this build, I don't want that bonus key. That way, when I do certain attacks like Heaven Nerf and Rumbling Nerf or whatever it might be, even if it is Tri Spark or Lumber Chop or whatever, I want to be able to reduce my key to zero. And the lower my maximum key, the more consistently I can actually do that. No problem. Now, for everything else here, for the most part, we are just going for passive. So I do have some points in the corner tiger. I have points in the corner boar. Now, normally I always say don't go for a corner tiger. And that's because if you have life recovery amarita absorption and you are using the extraction talisman, you are healing yourself so quickly when you're doing attacks, especially with a faster swinging weapon that you really can't take advantage of this. But with the axe, you kind of can, because the thing is, is that the axe is super slow. 
So you're not going to be healing yourself like really quickly back to full. Like with dual swords or tompers or even with the spear. If you're doing like piercing rain. You are healing yourself so quickly if you have life recovery and marine absorption with the extraction talisman. That you really cannot take advantage of the corner tiger. Where with the axe you actually can. And the boar is just good because this can just save your life. So why not? Why not go for this? It can kick in, save your life. And that's great. I have 10 points in the melee mastery for that plus 20 attack bonus and i also have like a bunch of the other attack increasing passives here like the one that will deal more damage from behind the one that will deal more damage when i have full health and same with this one where it just does more damage to yokais none of these are like super good but you know why not there's no reason not to go for these Alrighty, so now let's actually talk about skill customization really there's only one thing i want to talk about here and that is Rumbling Earth, because remember, with this build, I'm in the B Agility, and because of that, if I'm going for Rumbling Earth, even with Rage, I am not going to drain all of my key, unfortunately. But I can, if I can increase the key consumption rate, where with these perks that you can put on here, like for example, Desperate Strike, I can actually increase the key consumption enough to the point where it's going to cost me all of my key to use Rumbling Earth. But I do want to say that Desperate Strike on Rumbling Earth is actually pretty good. This has kicked in actually several times for me, and it will heal me up to full, which is super good. So if I'm like taking a lot of damage and I'm about to die, if I can get Rumbling Earth off, it will fully heal me, and I really like that. But the main reason we're using this is because of that 1.30 key consumption rate now if you actually have it at 1.20 it will not work you need the 1.30 if you want to drain your key to zero with rumbling earth but with like heaven and earth it doesn't matter you're always going to drain your key to zero pretty much guaranteed so for this one i go for damage boost stamina if you have 99 in that stat and you have that damage boost it will be a five percent damage boost and that's it, but it's better than nothing, there's no penalty to it, so that's why I pretty much go for it. But, that's really it when it comes to these like little perks you can put on, because these are my main attacks, Heaven and Earth, and Rumbling Earth. And then the other thing I actually will do is Strong Attacks, and that's, you know, just something you can do, and it does do a lot of damage. But, the bread and butter really is Heaven and Earth. And every once in a while, I do like to do Rumbling Earth, especially for like AoE, taking out groups. That's always a lot of fun. Alrighty, so now let's talk about the equipment, the Guardian Spirit, the Soul Course, pretty much everything when it comes to the gear. Now the first thing I want to bring up is my accessories. I am doing the Poison Setup, so because of that I have Melee Damage versus Poison Enemy. I have Poison Accumulation. On this one I have Magic Power. Just because I like magic power, I'm a big fan. But also I have defense bonus magic. I do have 99 magic, so I get a nice defense bonus from that. Now with this particular accessory, this is the Master of Spears one. If you have the Yazakani, you can take advantage of it. And why not? It's 90% movement speed. That's pretty cool whenever you get an enemy kill. But the thing is, is that this one cannot come with life recovery and Marita absorption. And because of that... I just go for that defense bonus magic, but technically I guess you could replace that with anything else if you wanted to, or you can replace the magic power if you wanted to replace that, maybe with luck or something. It's really up to you on what you might want, but this is a very good accessory. It's just that most weapons I like to have as much life recovery and Marita absorption, but like I said with the axe, it really doesn't matter because we're not benefiting from that all that much. It's not like tomfos or dual swords or any faster swinging weapon because those weapons you can heal yourself so quick if you have a lot of life recovery amarita absorption and of course i am using the yazakani magatama it's pretty much on every build so that's obvious now with this one it's the same deal i have the poison set up i do have the life recovery amarita absorption because it comes with it but also i go for defense bonus courage i also have 99 courage and because of that, I'm getting a really big defense buff. Now, technically, I can go for either Courage or Magic. It doesn't matter. But that was the first one that popped up. So that was the one I grabbed. Now, for my Guardian Spirit, I'm using Tension. This is obvious. It's the best one in the game. 
by far. We're always in high stance with this build, so it's perfect. We get that damage buff. Now, for my soul cores, I do actually use the drunk dude. That's the first one. You know what I'm talking about. I always have funny names for all of the different enemies and bosses because I don't want to massacre the names. I'm sorry, I just don't. But the drunk dude is good because he has increased defense, amarita absorption. It's super good, super consistent. You can stack that with the Tengen buff if you go in the mid stance, you get that increased defense. And then you can actually have double increased defense, amarita absorption. So that's kind of cool. I have the Toxic Slime Soul Core and I have the Snake Boss. Toxic Slime is just really good for applying poison, it gives you poison accumulation. The Snake Boss. He gives you the melee damage versus poison enemy, so that's pretty much it. You can change this up slightly, but one thing I will say is that whenever I'm using the Master of Spears accessory for that movement speed, I normally use the Drunk Dude Soul Core just to get that defense. But one thing you can always do is use the Wheelchair Lady, which she will give you faster movement speed Amarita Absorption. It's not as fast as that accessory, but it still is nice, so it's up to you on which one you might want to use, but you can really use whichever one you want, because it really just depends on what accessories you might be rocking. Now, let's actually talk first about the weapon, and then I'll talk about the set bonus and everything. So the weapon I have is the Obsidian Knight Axe, and I used this on so many different builds that I decided, you know what? I'm going to get it to 170 just because literally I use it on all my builds now. Because Rage is so good for every build. And just by equipping this, you can get the increased Rage duration bonus 30%. That's nice. Now for this setup, we are using the entire Obsidian set. The main reason is because of the 5% melee damage and the attack bonus stamina. Now together, for heavy armor, that's actually really good because you have the 5% for the melee damage, which is just general damage, and then the attack bonus stamina is about another 5%. So overall, you get about a 10%. Plus, I do use the lightning talisman, so I can get a little bit of health back, I guess, from that life drain. I don't think that's very good, but honestly, I've never really like figured out like how good it is. It could be really good, I just don't know. But on the weapon itself, I have melee key damage, I have poison accumulation, that's really important. Rage duration, you definitely want that. I have attack bonus courage, A+. Plus. I have final blow damage, and I have high attack break. Whenever you go for heaven and earth with high attack break, if you're fighting a human and they're blocking you, you will destroy their guard. It's super good. I have this remodeled for the double remodel. I have stamina and courage, A-. minus. And it is really strong. 2,500 attack, that's a lot of attack. It is really, really good. My secondary weapon is the katana from the obsidian set. That way I can just get the full set. That's why that's on there. Now let's talk about my helmet. The helmet I'm using is the coiled snake helmet. Now this helmet is really good because pretty much poison is like the best damage boosting thing in the game right now. So, this makes a lot of sense. It gives you melee damage versus poison enemy. That's just general damage, so it's really good in that way. Where you can put a skill damage on another helmet, so maybe you want heaven and earth damage, for example, on another helmet, and then now you're boosting heaven and earth by almost 10%. But the thing is, is that that melee damage versus poison enemy, that's just general damage. So it's going to work on heaven and earth. It's going to work... On Rumbling Nerf, it's going to work on your strong attacks. Basically, all of our attacks are going to be boosted by this helmet compared to another helmet. So if you can take advantage of the Coiled Snake Helmet on your build, it's not a bad idea. Now, one thing I will say is that what's really cool about the Coiled Snake Helmet is you can put Rage Duration on this helmet. You cannot stack Rage Duration with a Skill Damage, but you can stack melee damage versus poison enemy with rage duration so this can give you that little bit extra rage 10 percent rage duration basically equals three seconds with this build rage will last for about 45 seconds and that's definitely not too bad because we have 30 percent from the obsidian set 
we have 10% on the axe itself, and then we have 9.6% on this helmet. So overall, we have about a 50% increase, and that will equal about 15 seconds. So that's really cool. But this is what I have on the helmet if you're interested. And I also do have Rage Duration Gauntlets. If anyone wants to hit me up to get any Inheritables, you can always do so. And if you want Rage Duration, I have that as well. But I definitely think Rage Duration is what you might want to put on the Coil Snake Helmet because it just makes the most sense. Now one thing I want to quickly bring up is that I can make this build overweight Anytime I really want to, because sometimes with the axe, being overweight, being in the C agility range can be good. It's something that I've talked about before, and I'm going to talk about it because I will show the other setup from my previous build video about the axe. I have updated it, and that is a thick boy. It is in the C agility range, it's super heavy, and I like to play it like that. But let's say with this build, if I want to turn it, into a C agility overweight build, what I do is I just switch the helmet out and I switch over to the Royal Horned Helm. And this weighs so much, it's 7.1, which is kind of insane. You do get that life drain, strong attack, it's really not that good. But I do have heaven and earth damage on this helmet. So if I wanna be overweight for whatever reason, I can do so just by switching to this helmet and that's really cool. Now for all of my armor, you're going to notice I'm going to have heaven and earth damage on it because that's our main thing that we're going for here. And I'm going to give you a quick look at all of my armor. The chest piece, the most important thing is always life recovery, emerald absorption. It's super good. I also really do like having that damage taken critical because like I said, that can save your life. And I like to have luck on every piece just to get more drops. Same with equipment drop rate. One important thing, of course, is faster winded recovery. You definitely want that just because that is going to help you. You will be winded with this build. It's going to happen. If you get hit at the wrong time when you're doing your attack, you will be winded. But with that faster winded recovery, it is actually really quick to recover from being winded. And that's really nice. Now, one thing I should also talk about is... What I've done with the remodeling for the armor. Because what I've done here is I have remodeled all of my armor to be reinforced. Super heavy. Basically the obsidian armor, especially with the coil snake helmet, which is medium armor. If you have 99 stamina, you can definitely reinforce it so that it's heavier and you get more defense. But all you have to do, if you want to be under 70%, where right now I'm at 69.9, which is kind of perfect. All you have to do to get that is you have to not reinforce one piece. So with the boots here, I have these set to standard. And on my accessories, these are also not reinforced to be heavier. You could also make these heavier. But I think this one is set to refine. So it increased the stat requirement. But it doesn't matter. I have 99 magic, 99 courage. I don't care about that. But with this one, I think this one is set to standard. So if you want to be under 70%, that's all you got to do with the remodeling with this build. It's just don't remodel one piece and keep that standard. And then every other piece, you can have that be remodeled for reinforced to be heavy. So that is something that you can do. Now, I do want to talk and show you my other setup that I showed before because I have updated it. I've changed it. But I do want to say that every single thing about the build is the same as this one. The only difference is the armor and the set bonuses. That's it. And potentially you could switch the clan if you wanted to. But that's really up to you. And I'll talk about that once I get there. But both of the builds are very good. But now I'm going to cut this ahead and I'm going to switch all the armor and everything over to the other setup. And I'll show you that setup. I'm not going to show any gameplay with that or anything, but I am just going to show you what I do for that if you're interested, because I really still love that setup as well, and I use it from time to time. It's a lot of fun still. Alrighty, well this is my thick boy. This is my Kentaro setup, and this was from my original Overpowered Axe video. I still love this build, by the way, 
and I have updated it, so I'm going to actually give you the update on this. But this build is still really good. Now, the weapon I do like to use is the Obsidian Knight's Axe, mainly because I want to get that Rage Duration bonus. Why not? It's 30%, but also because it's 170. So this is the one I actually use to attack, and I do refashion this to look cooler, where the Kataro Axe, I keep this one normal. That way I know which one it is, because I don't want to get confused. But the Kataro setup is extremely good. We get Rumley nerf damage. That's great. We get increased attack and defense with the axe. That's good. But the main thing is that strong attack damage, 15%. Now, this is a thick boy. This is a really fat setup. We're at 76%. I have every piece of this armor remodeled to be overweight. Just because, honestly, no matter what I do, I'm still going to be overweight. Unless I have like 99 strength. Maybe I can make it be B agility if I had 99 strength. But I don't care about that. I'm not trying to do that because I want to use rage and then I want to do strong attacks and reduce my key to zero with the strong attacks. Same with rumbling nerf. Anytime I do rumbling nerf, it's reducing my key to zero. And I'm key pulsing and I'm just spamming strong attacks and I'm spamming rumbling nerf. Now theoretically, you could put heaven and earth damage on this and you could also use heaven and earth. It's something you could do. But honestly, I've tried that before and I just never really liked it with this setup. Because when I would have that, I found myself not doing the strong attacks nearly as much. And the thing is, is that with this setup, you can easily run around one shot in everything with rumbling earth and your strong attacks. I mean, it's crazy. Your strong attacks are really powerful with this build one of the best things about this build though is that this build you can actually set this up a lot easier than most builds that you're going to see from me on youtube or just in, on youtube in general because all you actually have to do to make this build is you first need to get the armor you need to get the weapons and all that and then once you have that you don't really need to worry about inheritables on this build all that much now yes you should put attack on this if possible but you can use white inheritable attack you can forge gauntlets over and over again to get that white inheritable attack to actually put that on your build that's what i did and it's fine like there's no problem with that it really isn't difficult to get white inheritable attack so you don't have to rely on someone hooking you up with inheritables or farming random people to try to get inheritables now, I do have Rage Duration on every piece. That's one of the things I've done to update this build. But that's not necessary. It's nice. Don't get me wrong. It's really nice. But you don't have to have that. But that's one of the cool things about this build is that you can make it and it's really easy to make. And honestly, it's going to be really good. And you don't need to rely on other people hooking you up with inheritables to make this work. Now, the Rage Duration, I do want to talk about that, because this build, I have 90% Rage Duration. My Rage will last for 57 seconds, and that is crazy, man. It is really, really nice. So, everything with this build is the same as the other one. I can switch to this anytime I want, and I don't really have to do anything besides switch my armor and my weapon. That's it. And I can use this build. So that's one of the cool things. Because the stats are the same. The Guardian Spirit is the same. The Soul Cores are the same. You could benefit from maybe changing the clan. But I'm going to talk about that. But honestly it's really not a big deal. But I really still love this setup. I do think it's still really good. I also really like that Obsidian setup for the heaven and earth damage i will say that setup is probably faster at killing bosses and it's also like really good if you can get heaven and earth off and you are playing like three person co-op you can just kill things like really quickly it's super super good and it does a lot of damage quickly but i still really really love this build Alrighty, so now I'm going to switch this all back and we are going to talk about everything else. But I do actually need to bring something up. I do want to talk about my secondary spirit. I haven't actually talked about this yet. 
and I am using the boar. The boar is definitely the best secondary spirit just because you get damage taken, mid attack, 7.5%. So you take less damage while you're attacking. That's really good. Honestly, I think this is definitely your best setup for Guardian Spirit. There's no doubt. That is Tenjin main, boar secondary, pretty much every build, I think. That's probably your best bet. Alrighty, so like I said, I'm going to switch this all back and then I am going to talk about my magic and my ninja. Alrighty, well now I'm going to talk about my ninja and my magic. Now for my ninja, the main thing I have on here is poison shurikens. This is my main source of poisoning enemies and then I also use the toxic slime soul core. That's my other way of poisoning enemies. But... I don't like using more than two shortcuts. And because of that, I only really have room for one ninja item to equip. Because I like to have everything else shortcut it with this build. So poison shurikens will pretty much win. Where most builds, when I show them, I talk about the poison bombs or the poison traps. Those are all great options that you could put on if you like. But for me... With this build, I think Poison Shurikens is fine. And like I said, I use the Toxic Slime to help me poison enemies. So I have 10 Poison Shurikens on. And I also actually have two Quick Change Scrolls on. Which is actually pretty cool because it's not shortcut it. But what I do is I just go into my menu and I'll use this. It has a great duration on it. It's one of the best buffs in the game because if you die, you don't die. That's amazing. But I hate having more than two shortcuts. When I have more than two shortcuts, I just feel like it's annoying having to scroll through the shortcuts. So I really only like to have two shortcuts. And my first shortcut is always like my buff shortcut. If you actually look, you'll see it's all buffs. And then my second shortcut is my combat shortcut. I have elixirs, my poison shurikens, my weakness, and my sloth. That way, if I'm fighting a boss... I can always heal with the elixir if I need to. I can poison the boss. I can use the talisman, sloth for weakness, to debuff the boss. So that's what I'm doing with my shortcuts. And I do not like to have more than two shortcuts. Now for my magic, I am using extraction talisman. It's like pretty much the best buff in the game. Just because it will help you apply all of your Amarita absorption effects. Your life recovery, your tension buff. This is amazing. Every build should be using Extraction Talisman. That's just the truth of the matter. Now, my other two big buffs is Barrier. This is like my favorite buff because it adds key recovery speed and it will dispel Yokai Realms automatically. So that's really awesome. I have Rejuvenation on as well. This is just nice to help me stay alive. And then I also have Weakness and Sloth. Now, I know a lot of people do not like Sloth. That's fine. Now, I don't think people dislike Sloth because they think it's bad. They dislike it because they think it's cheap. Now, if you do not like Sloth and you don't like using it because you think it's cheap, don't use it. That's fine. Take it off and instead, just put on Luckbringer. There you go. Easy solution and you don't have to use Sloth. But for me, I don't mind using Sloth. Sloth is amazing. This build has so much magic power. My durations are awesome and with sloth and weakness and the barrier rejuvenation extraction all of the buffs and the debuffs they have a really really good duration to them and then finally i have the lightning talisman and this is just a weapon buff normally i don't like using a talisman to buff my weapon if i'm using rage on an axe because I'm switching to the axe, I'm applying rage, I'm switching back to my other weapon like dual swords or spear or whatever it might be, where if you're using the axe, you don't have to do that. You never need to switch to your other weapon. So you can easily take advantage of a weapon buff and lightning just makes the most sense because I'm using obsidian armor and I get that life drain. So why not? Now let's talk about the clan and I'm in Honda. Honda, I still think it's like the best clan, especially if you're using skills. This build, I'm using Heaven and Earth. I'm using Rumbling Earth. You get 28% active skill damage. So that's amazing. So if you're using skills, Honda's kind of the way to go. Plus, the other effect is stupid good as well. 
you got damage taken half, unscathed, and 80% chance of that kicking in. And this is, of course, once you max the clan out. But the thing is, is that with the axe, that damage taken half isn't as good just because, like I've already said, the life recovery Amarita absorption with the axe isn't as good because it's not super fast, like Tonfas or dual swords. Like if you're playing with Tonfas and you got that life recovery and you're attacking, you're going to be at full health all the time. And every time you get hit, you have a good chance of taking half the damage because of Honda. So it just is awesome. With the axe, it's not as consistent, but still, 28% skill damage, and you also get that damage taken half to unscathed 80%. Honda is awesome. Now, another really good clan for the axe. Honestly, this is potentially better for the other build, the Kentaro build, the thick boy, the fat guy. And that is Toto. I've always been a big fan of Toto. I still love Toto to this day. And when you max this clan out, you get life bonus A stamina, which adds about 800 extra life. So that's really cool. And you also get damage bonus equipment weight A. That's about a 5% bonus, just like a lot of the other bonuses. They're about 5%. So you might be thinking, well, why would you want just 5%? Well, the reason is with the other build, you're doing so many strong attacks, that's 5% general damage that's going to apply to your strong attacks so yes you're going to lose a little bit of damage with rumbling earth but being that rumbling earth is really the only skill i like using on that other build and outside of that i'm just spamming strong attacks toto kind of makes sense and i do really like that extra life it's really easy to get 5,000 life with toto if you have 99 stamina so it is a really nice clan. I like it a lot. But I still think Honda overall is a much better clan for both builds, to be honest with you. Now, let's talk about my stats. And I'll be completely honest, the stats are really easy with the axe. Because all you need for your damage is courage and stamina. So you want to max that out to 99. Then you need a Put your points to your stat requirements for your armor. And in my case, I have 7 constitution and 8 strength. And then any leftover points can go anywhere you want. So I recommend just throwing them all into magic. Because courage and magic will raise your magic power together. So you can actually get a lot of magic power if you have 99 courage and 99 magic. And then the remaining points, I just throw it into decks just because why not? You don't need heart on this build because we want to have low key. My key is 960. And that's really good for me because I want to use up all my key when I'm attacking. So I want to use it all up when I'm doing rumbling earth, when I'm doing strong attacks, when I'm doing heaven and earth. And if you have like a thousand or less key you're gonna blow through your key, no problem. So the stats with the axe, super simple because you just need stat requirements for your armor and then you need courage and stamina for your damage and then everything else is kind of up to you. Do you want 99 decks? You can do 99 decks, it's up to you. But I like magic, so I go for the magic instead. My magic power is pretty insane. It's 707. It can even be higher. I can get that up to at least 730 if I wanted to. But I don't bother just because 707 is good enough. My durations for my buffs are really, really good. They last a very long time. But that's mainly what magic power will do. It will increase the duration of your buffs and your debuffs. So that's just really awesome. I hate happen to rebuff. I'm not using any offensive magic, so I'm not really worried about magic power in that regard. I could if I wanted to. I could actually apply water really easily because I have so much magic power. And I can actually even apply confusion really easily if I wanted to because I have so much magic power. But I'm really just using it for the buffs because I just don't like to have to reapply my buffs non-stop i find that annoying so i like to have a really long duration on my buffs 
if possible. And having 707 magic power means that I have a very long duration on my buffs. Alrighty, well that's going to pretty much do it for everything I wanted to talk about when it comes to this build. I showed the other build as well to give you an update on it. Now I'm going to take this obsidian build with the heaven and earth into a level. It's going to be a level with enemies and bosses. And I'll show you how it will work against enemies. And you've already seen it against bosses, but you're going to see it again against some other bosses. And it is going to absolutely dominate. Alrighty, well, this is Wave of Terror. This is a great mission for fighting enemies and some bosses, so I really like it a lot. You know, one thing I forgot to talk about is my ranged weapons, but when it comes to ranged weapons, if you're going to do the axe build, use a hand cannon. The hand cannon actually does scale with stamina and courage, so you can double remodel it, and it does a lot of damage with the axe build, so that's really cool. Definitely would recommend using a hand cannon if you're going to actually mess with a ranged weapon at all with this build. Alright, let's go ahead and smack him with that. Okay, or he'll just knock me down. That's fine. Basically, heaven and earth, like, if you can pull that off against any enemy, you are just going to flat out murder that enemy with that combo. There is no doubt about it. Hit him with the poison. Let's try to do a rumbling nerf against him. Good with that big, big damage. We gotta be careful because we're gonna have bosses spawn here throughout this level, and it's kind of a good idea to make sure your buffs are going. In fact, this first boss should be spawning pretty soon here. Alright, go ahead and smack me all you want. I think he might be spawning now, so let's just do that. Yeah, there he is. Alright, let's back up. The range of these enemies, I kind of hate it at times. Like, that stupid giant weapon can hit you from so far away. Alright, come on, swing. There we go. Let's get behind him. And try to get that off. And yeah, one heaven and earth just took him out. No problem. I think it popped up 18,000 for that final hit. The final hit of heaven and earth does, like, really, really big damage, okay? That is something. All right, come on. There we go. Let's go ahead and smack him now. Cast that. Get the rejuvenation buff back on us. And yeah, you can do your strong attacks as well, but it's really up to you, you know? Oh, I need to actually use that too. There we go. All right. Now let's take this guy out. There we go. Hello. How you doing? Okay, you're just going to dodge that. You got to love that, right? All right, let's rebuff. Oh, hey, we got another boss. Well, that's actually kind of perfect because we're actually really good in terms of our buffs and everything. I'm surprised he didn't shoot out the fireball. This guy always shoots out a fireball. All right, well, that's good for me. I'll take it. Why not? Let's actually get this off, too. There we go. And if I could, I would have just went for the strong attack right there, but he actually backed up. But it still works. So it doesn't really matter. Now we have one more boss to deal with. I'm just going to quickly do that just in case, but I doubt this boss is going to really survive very long. All right, let's smack him with the sloth. Smack him with the weakness. Let's try to dodge him or block him. There we go. Smack him with that. And now let's just destroy him. This should just kill him. Okay, or not. Well, whatever. And there you go, guys. I mean, that's basically how the build runs and operates in normal levels where there's enemies and stuff. I definitely love the axe build. The axe is my main weapon, and I definitely have always been a big fan of the intensity, low-key build that goes with the axe. I know Mad Spinner is always popular, but I'm just really not a fan of that playstyle. I definitely prefer this playstyle to it. And yeah, Heaven and Earth, man, is super strong. I definitely say I think the Obsidian setup is better than the Kataro setup, but the Kataro setup is still really good. And with that setup, it's actually pretty easy to build that, just because all you gotta do is actually just make the armor and just do the setup. And then you really don't need inheritables on that setup. If anything, you might want some attack inheritables, and that's it. You don't need to worry about skill damage or rage duration. You can skip all of that. 
But, I mean, here's the deal. If you guys want to hit me up, I am willing to drop my rev grave to anyone. So, just send me a friend request and send me a message. My PSN will be in the description. It's in the pinned comment. So, if you want heaven and earth damage or rage duration or whatever, just ask for it. And if I have the time, I will definitely try to hook you up. But I do really hope that you have enjoyed this video and that it has helped. If it has, will you please like the video for me and be sure to subscribe, especially if you're interested in Neo 2. I'm trying to put out a lot of Neo 2 videos. And also click the bell. If you want to stay notified, you got to click the bell. That's super important now. Thank you very much for watching. And I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day and peace out.